You know, we live on a planet whose fundamental model, business model, is growth, growth, growth. You listen to politicians, you listen to uh, business models, and uh, or investors looking to invest, they want to know what sort of growth, 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 growth. Well, reality check, we live on a finite planet. And ultimately, for example, really, no investor is going to invest in this field because it only can produce so much. And it can only produce so much good. Well, this field is just like the planet. It's a microcosm of the planet. And ultimately, we are in a race to destroy it because of our fundamental business model. This model, I call it the startup business model, is fundamentally flawed because you cannot have infinite growth on a finite space. Our planet is a finite space. So, our planet's full. And ultimately, what's really scary is if you know anything about exponential growth, you can't get to the point of you've, you've done it, right? Until it's too late. There's no warning. And because uh, like 2% becomes 4%, becomes 8%, becomes 16%. And you're thinking, oh, it's only 16%. Well, next one's 32%. Next one's 64%. 128%. And so on. Or, or can't be 120 but you know, growth, growth, growth of the full. And the problem is, is our entire business model when I say our business model, I mean our society is built on this fundamental flaw. Politicians get, get, cannot get re-elected unless they can show, you know, growth. Cities are all trying to grow. You have had a 5%, 10%, 15% growth, 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 growth. Well, again, you've got to think of this field. There's only so much growth you can have. And one of the big problems with the United States right now is and the reason with the economy is, and everything is we've basically hit that plateau. It's too difficult or it takes more energy to get that much more growth out of it, out of the system. And other countries like China have replaced our you know, our industries because of the cost of labor and other things. And the simple fact is, they're an empty field with plenty of growth, opportunity. So, once you understand that, then you understand that our, the problem is what's known as endemic not systemic. The problem facing our planet is one that is a fundamental flaw and that unless it is changed, we really risk everything. And then I'm, I'm just one little guy telling you this. But if you do the research and you go out there and you listen to TED Talks and other things, watch documentaries on the decline of our oceans and our decline of species and start asking yourself why, 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 why. It becomes very apparent. So we need to change that. How do we change that? Well, we need to be and as, as independent as we can. We need to make the things we need locally. Then it'd be like this, like, well, off this field, not <laughs> in the water, because they're planting rice. In the sense that everything we need should be able to come from our community. And with, you know, 
with the advent of 3D printers and, and um, CNC routers and every home has the potential of becoming a little factory. And every home can be a little farm making products and goods for that neighborhood. And every home can be a collective of not one family, but multiple families and a community to build up a, a new kind of society that isn't built on selfishness, but selflessness. An empathic society that's built on giving and doing and not taking and that's ultimately what Foundups is all about. And I want you to think of instead of companies like Coca-Cola that, that own a brand, we have brands that are owned collectively, that are developed collectively these open brands as I call them and these open products and these open homes imagine in the future you can just stay wherever you want for free and then spend a few hours working working the field making something contributing back and that's it imagine a society where we're not so fixated on you know, on making those millions. Because what, what does really money mean? It means nothing. Money really is this illusion that we have created to, to enable people to be selfish. In a future society, you know, the idea of money is really silly. Now, I don't know why, for example, we have this idea that we have to go get a job, we have to go work somewhere, and we have to go and, you know, as long as we're providing and doing something beneficial to the planet and society, that is work. As long as what we're doing is helping. Is 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 giving back then I believe that's a good thing I'm headed to school right now to pick up my kids and just figure out do a little talk on the problem and the solution the solution is simple is launching companies that ultimately are owned by the people for the people and the people including the planet Companies that are mandated to give back 80% of their net profits and capital gains into launching more such found ups. Companies that ultimately are net neutral and do not participate in politics or special interests or any other thing. They're mandated not to. They can't go and participate in political campaigns. I mean, it's my position that in the future, that ultimately politics are going to become autonomous agents you know like uh, computers independent computers you don't need politicians they shouldn't be imposing what they think is right they should be following the feelings of their constituents and you really don't need people to do that you need autonomous agents to do that so anyway there are my kids over there